My guests today are Nicole Rizzuto and Eric I. The statements on each of their websites says it quite succinctly, bringing both the medical and art world together, artistry to take you beyond surgery. Nicole has a background in the medical field working beside surgeons in the OR. Eric has over 30 years of experience in the tattoo industry. They each have extensive background and training in art that I will let them share with us in our conversation today. Well, hey, you two, it's about time we knock this podcast out. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having us. This is a true honor, and I'm so excited to be talking about something that I have so much passion for. So thank you for this. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Great to see you. Great to be here. Yeah, I I really am pleased that you guys came on. So Nicole, you are up in New York. Yeah, I'm located in Long Island, New York in Belmore, Nassau County. I was born in Long Island and then lived upstate and then actually even lived in Los Angeles for a few years and then came back to good old roots of Long Island. (laughs) Okay, well, so for Eric and I, we're going cross country to what I call the best coast. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Eric and I are both in Seattle. He's done a tattoo for me, a decorative tattoo after my deep. So yeah, I like to tease people the the West Coast is the best coast, but you're on the East Coast. And that's what I love about this conversation is that, you know, I'm able to talk to two professionals who are working with breast cancer patients in the medical tattoo industry. So Really glad that I got you guys on board together with your busy schedules and everything you're doing for your for your clients. So, hey, how about, can we go ladies first, Eric? Absolutely. Wouldn't have it any other way. All right. I didn't think so. So, Nicole, how about you just begin by sharing your personal story and background, why you chose the field of medical tattoo? Yeah, absolutely. So, first and foremost, I've I've been an artist. I knew I was a uh, I had talent in art since I was a child. And during, you know, growing up, I was drawn to the tattoo culture and to the industry and the art form itself and I just fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. And did get an apprenticeship at the age of 22 with a family friend who actually was old school tattoo artist and I begged him and showed me the ropes and I did body art tattooing for a few years, but then I actually got diagnosed with a uh, rare kidney cancer mm-hmm. that was found accidentally, luckily, and had a couple of surgeries, had complications like pleural fusion was, you know, in the hospital for a while. There was a couple of times where they thought maybe I was having blood clots and was not going to make it in a very, at a young age, it humbled me. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Thinking that I might not live through this. Wow. So I did make a promise to the universe, like, please keep me alive and I'll donate myself to helping others. Like one of those foxhole prayer things at a very dark moment of all of this. And after two major surgeries and losing a kidney, adrenal gland, lymph nodes, part of my diaphragm, a rib and my ureter, I have been cancer free and decided I'm going to keep my promise and went into the surgical technology field, which is I'm part of the surgical team who assists with operations. I've done things as neurosurgery, spine surgery, orthopedics, Da Vinci robot, oncology, general, pediatrics, GYN, and vascular. Basically, I've done everything except open heart because that's a whole specialty in itself. It is. Yeah. And I've actually have seen the progression of breast reconstruction surgery in my 12 plus careers as a certified surgical tech where they would just do a mastectomy or lumpectomy and just do implants. And then I saw the tram flap come through and then it became the deep flap come through. And the progression that I've seen from how great the outcomes have been for patients is amazing. And that's one of the things why I love medicine and surgery and anatomy so much. And it was uh, working with some surgeons and I was talking about my past tattoo career and they heard it and like whipped their head around like, you know how to tattoo? like, yes, is, you're going to judge me. <laughs> like, no. like you should do nipples. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like I had no idea about it at all. I didn't even know like it existed. So I work usually in main large operating rooms where we do the larger procedures like deep flaps, 
tram flaps, mastectomies, the things like nipple graft creations were usually done in an outpatient or it could be done in the offices. Right. So I never really saw that, that step. And I just, you know, was kind of focused on the big surgeries. So right. I didn't even think about it. And I always say this surgeon kindly bullied me into this, like, come on, I've seen your artwork. Come on. I know you could do it. I think you'd be great at it. And a part of me at that time, surgery is very stressful. So I was, I was thinking, man, I miss art. I miss tattooing. I was thinking about going back into body art again. Uh-huh. And uh, I felt like, all right, well, I can apply my medical experience and can apply it to this. And I fell in love with it. And it seemed like I found the two loves of my life, the, the medical world, anatomy, surgery, and art and tattooing. I'm like, oh, this was totally meant for me. And I've been doing medical tattooing since 2019. That is quite a step-by-step journey that led you to your beautiful work and passion you're doing now. Thank you. That is a cool story. Yeah. And I too, Nicole, have really, I mean, I had my deep in 2014. So just the, the, just the progress in techniques and protocols and different things that they're using now. It is fascinating. So yeah. Hey, thanks for sharing that with us now. So let's go over to Mr. Eric. I, who I have a little connection with in Seattle at the tender age of 65, big reveal. I went to Eric for a decorative tattoo on my abdominal scar that I acquired from my deep flap. And so I not only have met him in person, but, you know, Eric, I talk to patients, I talk to women who have gone to you. And I also had the distinct privilege and humble privilege of watching you do a nipple, a real, a 3D tattoo on one of your clients. It was absolutely mind blowing to me. And the art and compassion and care that you combine in your work is just, it's very gratifying for me to watch and very humbling. So there's my shameless plug on you, but now I want you to tell me about your connection. What inspired you to begin doing medical tattoos and the nipple and a reel of 3D tattoos? I had been tattooing for quite a while. I started tattooing in 1990. Mm-hmm. And I had, uh, I already had a specialty in realism, portrait work, textural types of work. And that's the type of artwork that I'm drawn to and that I love mainly. So I was working with a new client who came to me for some decorative tattoos. And she had just prior to coming to see me, she she was actually healing from uh, deep flap surgery when I met her for a consultation. So that was brave of her to come out still sort of stooped over, you know, healing for, you know, what healing from that is like, but you know, she was antsy to get out of the house. She wanted to do something with her body. That was something that she wanted. So we planned out some decorative tattoos for her shoulders. And during working on her, she described to me the, the nipple tattoo process. And I, I had a vague knowledge of that. I knew of Vinnie Myers, you know, I'd seen the Vice Magazine art thing on him. Right. So I knew a little bit about it, but not much. And I was just fascinated by it when she told me about it. I was actually fascinated by deep flap surgery in general. Was, mm-hmm. I've never heard of that type of surgery. It's fairly amazing. So I just decided that it seemed like I was really well suited for realism, portrait type tattoos. I paint portraits. So I was mixing, mixing skin colors and whatnot was already something in my wheelhouse. And it just seemed like I knew there was nobody doing it locally to quality result degree. Mm -hmm. So I thought I should just dive into that, teach myself how to do that. I'm pretty much a self-taught artist across the board. So that didn't, that didn't, wasn't daunting for me at all to just try to learn how to do that. Now, finding clients is another another story because there's a huge amount of trust involved. And if you don't have photos of the work, it's sort of harder to get to get that rolling. But yeah, that's how I started. And the woman that came to me is now my fiance. So that worked out on many different levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was wait I was waiting for that final little thing there. You guys, I have goosebumps right now listening to your stories. I love, I love hearing personal stories. And you both we're led to this really. And 
thank goodness for breast cancer patients 